Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to UNESCO UNIVOC in Bonn, to the UNESCO TVIT Forum, looking ahead, inspiring and empowering youth through skills development, which takes place on the occasion of World Youth Skills Day 2016. Uh, we're very happy to welcome you here in Bonn and look forward uh, to the entire day with, that we spent with you. My name is Jens Liebe. I'm senior program expert at uh, UNESCO UNIVOC, and I will have the pleasure of leading you through this day as master of ceremony. Uh, before we start, I would like to also welcome those guests who join us from around the world uh, through the webcast of this event, and uh, would like to encourage everyone to also participate in this event through social media on our Twitter account with the hashtag WYSD. Uh, we also have uh, French interpretation for those uh, uh, francophone guests on Channel 2, um, English on Channel 1, and uh, also French interpretation is available on the webcast. But be before we proceed with the uh, opening of the event, I'm sure you've all heard of the uh, terrible attack in France with uh, uh, 84 casualties, and we would like to... Uh, commemorate those victims with a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Let us now proceed uh, with the opening remarks, and I would like to call Shamal Majumdar, the head of UNESCO UNIVOC International Center, to the podium for his welcome remarks. Excellencies, honorable guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning. It is my pleasure to welcome you all in UNESCO UNIVOC International Center in Bonn. We are in a very beautiful city and hosted by a beautiful country, Germany, where UN and the government of work together, and this is the place where 19 UN organization with the university and government, we work together. Distinguished host partners from the Germany, delegates from the member states and friends of TVET, international development partners, UN agencies, private sectors, NGOs, member of inter-agency group on TVET, members of the UNIVOC network, those who are physically present today, and those who are watching this program through live webcast, especially welcome to youth representative, and also, last not the least, is our partner in skill exhibition, World Skills International. Your coming here today is a great value addition to us because we are observing World Youth Skill Day and also launching new TVET, UNESCO TVET strategy. It is a great occasion and great moment for us. I am very glad to share the news that this day is observed in parallel in many of the UNIVOC centers around the world. And they are observing in a big way. This is a simultaneously observant of the uh, UNIVOC center activity. You always know that we are take pride in echoing one word, which has uttered from Bonn in 2004, and which is very, very relevant today when we came to the Sustainable Development Goal. That is, if education is the key for development, technical, vocational education and training is the master key to unlock poverty and advanced sustainable development. You have seen 17 goals of SDG, and all the 17 goals indirectly related to TVET, and they are explicitly there is a relation between some of the goals with the TVET with the high priority. And this also affirms that TVET is the center stage 
and priority agenda of the member states. I don't have to reiterate that in 2004 it was a history, but now it's become a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, perhaps you will all agree with me that time and again we uttered this one from Univoc platform, that the world is not hungry for words, resolution, or recommendations. The world is hungry about action, real action on the ground. With this spirit, you will be happy to know we have met yesterday all the UNESCO field office and Univoc centers together to plan how we can implement Tibet strategy in future. And that's a great improvement on our planning cycle and our sincerity. We look forward to start working. We all forward to a very strong, productive discussion for coming two days. We will share our understanding how Univoc will be reacting to this and how they plan to implement the TVET strategy. Thank you very much to be part of a journey, and we are extremely happy to welcome you again in Bonn, our heart center. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shamal, for these uh, welcome remarks. Next, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Richard Kinley, acting chair of the head of agencies of the UN in Bonn, to give his welcome remarks. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's my uh, pleasant duty to welcome you here to Bonn today uh, and to the United Nations campus. Uh, we, those of us who work in the United Nations in Bonn, feel very privileged to have as our workplace this very pleasant, comfortable, and historic uh, locale, and we're very happy to share it with you today and hope we will be able to in the future. For those of you who don't know, this was the locale, of the premises of the German parliament for approximately 40 years, uh, and we feel, as I said, very privileged to now have this as our home base. I hope you'll have a chance to look around and, and explore a bit while you're here. I also welcome you on behalf of the 1,000 colleagues of you, the uh, 19 United Nations agencies who uh, work here in Bonn, and this year is a special year for us as well. We're celebrating the 20th anniversary of the UN in Bonn, but also what we see as a, uh, a very exciting future with uh, our uh, main theme, our collaboration theme of sustainability being very much on the agenda in the wake of the very successful uh, adoption last year of the Sustainable Development Goals and of the Paris Agreement. We also acknowledge, uh, as exciting as this new period may be, that there are very huge challenges and uh, because they, they will entail very significant transformations of national economies and of the global economy. And in that sense, those of you who, who work and are uh, preoccupied with the importance of training and vocational education know that there is a critical role for, for you to play. So our United Nations agencies, there's 19 of us here in Bonn, uh, work in a common uh, uh, direction of promoting sustainable development, whether through combating land degradation or placing volunteers in the service of development or raising awareness about issues, uh, about health, about research, and about vocational training, or uh, from this building, mobilizing uh, global action against climate change. We have, in working together, the 19 UN agencies have tried to turn our city and indeed our campus into a center, a global center for creativity and innovation on sustainable development. And in that sense, we hope that you're, you will feel inspired by our locales and also that they will contribute to very good discussions today. So it's in, in this spirit of sustainability that I welcome you all to the UN campus and wish you all a inspiring and empowering World Youth Skills Day 2016. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Kinley, for welcoming us. Uh, now it's my pleasure to uh, invite uh, David Achoarina, Director of the Division for Policy and Lifelong Learning Systems of UNESCO, uh, to come to the podium for the opening remarks. Excellencies, the distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, well, let me welcome you all to the launching of the uh, UNESCO TVET strategy here in, in Bonn. Uh, on behalf of UNESCO, I would like to, to thank the German government through the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, the Federal Ministry of Education and Research, and the Foreign Office uh, for its uh, support to UNESCO in its uh, important uh, event. We are very happy uh, to launch this new vision of UNESCO for Tibet here in Bonn with the UNESCO UNEVOC International Center for Tibet, which is a key arm of UNESCO for supporting Tibet uh, in member states. The strong commitment shown by the German government offers UNESCO and its uh, UNEVOC Center many opportunities to guide and to support the transformation of Tibet systems uh, in countries. Thanks to strategic partnerships and in particular our partnership with Germany, UNESCO is able to continuously support country policies in uh, modernizing and in reforming uh, Tibet systems so that they effectively contribute to sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, this occasion gives us a renewed commitment uh, to take up one of the most urgent priorities we have today. Today, on the occasion of the celebration of the World Youth uh, Skills Day, we focus our attention on the youth, but more particularly uh, on the 73 million who are unemployed. The global concern for youth unemployment is reflected in the new sustainable development agenda through many of the goals, and notably through the SDG 4, dedicated to education, and its framework for action. TVET holds a special place for achieving Education 2030 and its uh, 10 targets. And I'd like, uh, at this stage, maybe to leave uh, the floor to our uh, Director General, Irina Bokova, who was, uh, unfortunately was not able to be with us uh, today for this celebration, but who recorded a special message for the opening of this event. So please, may I invite you uh, to listen to this uh, message. World Youth Skills Day is an opportunity to stand with every young woman and man for their human rights and dignity, for their empowerment. Every young person must have the capacities and opportunities to become everything they wish, to shape the world as a better place. This, unfortunately, is not the case for millions of young people unable to contribute fully to their societies and economies. We cannot allow this to go on. We need a new focus on skills. We need new thinking about education. We need transformed training systems. This is why technical and vocational education and training stands at the heart of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with a focus on skills, on access, on outcomes in terms of employment and on eliminating gender disparities. To take this forward, UNESCO is today launching a new strategy for technical and vocational education and training to support governments in sharpening their training systems to equip all youth and adults with skills for employment, decent work, entrepreneurship and lifelong learning. In this spirit, I call upon all governments and partners to increase resources at every level. Partnership is the way forward. In the United Nations, through the Interagency Group on Technical and Vocational Education and Training, through UNESCO's UNEVOC Network, a global platform for peer learning, 
to share experience and practice, to build capacities for leaders and teaching personnel. This is about social inclusion. This is about reducing poverty. This is about building more sustainable green societies. This is fundamentally about advancing human rights and dignity. This is UNESCO's message on World Youth Skills Day. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, echoing the message of UNESCO's Director General, uh, I trust that this forum will uh, help us to reflect on how best to address uh, fruity vet, the challenges related to youth, uh, decent work, uh, employability, as well as uh, access to quality lifelong learning. The launch of a new TVET strategy uh, illustrates UNESCO's commitment to better respond to aspirations of youth, notably women and the most disadvantaged, for a better future. I thank you for your attention and I look forward to our fruitful deliberation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Acharina, for these uh, opening remarks. Now it's my pleasure to round off the opening program uh, with inaugural remarks by Mr. Roland Lindenthal. He's the head of the Division of Education and the Digital World at the German Federal Ministry of, uh, for Economic Cooperation and Development, BMZ. Please. Your Excellencies, Mr. Kinley, Mr. Acharena, Mr. Majumda, dear delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to be uh, here today, to be invited for, to this event and to be speaking on behalf of the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, commemorating the UN World Youth Skill Day and secondly, as you were mentioning before, the launch of uh, UNESCO's TVET strategy. I would also like to thank uh, UNESCO UNIVOC, Mr. Majumda and his team for hosting this event here in Bonn, and therefore for bringing us all together here in, in one room to talk about a very important topic. Today's event is entitled Looking Ahead, Inspiring and Empowering Youth Through Skills Development. Looking Ahead, Inspiration, Empowerment, this is what Technical and Vocational Education and Training stands for. Skills inspire, skills empower, and skills can make you look ahead to a better future. However, statistics suggest a rather negative picture in that context. The global youth unemployment rate, which is presently around 13%, the large number of working poor, and also youth enforced displacements are more than alarming. The lack of access to education which implies ultimately a lack of ex access to decent employment, forces many young people to leave their homes in search for work and better lives, better living conditions. And as a result, nations that are already struggling with a number of uh, massive problems lose their main source of generating revenues, their young people. They lose their future workforce. One of the main reasons for youth unemployment is a growing mismatch, we believe, between the supply and demand for skills, which is disproportionately affecting young people, A, and B, in developing countries. In many countries, TVED is not considered that's an 
additional cause for the problem. It's not considered a desired career path. Despite the large number of unemployed university graduates, the notion persists that TVET is for those who failed to ha enter higher education. And rather than regarding TVET and higher education as two separate career paths, we respond to this by promoting education systems to be permeable. BMZ strongly promotes the recognition of the potential of TVET to respond to youth unemployment, very important, provided a nation's TVET system delivers the skills that are really required on the labor market. And for us, the quality of TVET is really key in that context. We strongly recommend in the context of our development cooperation, A, to consult with the private sector when developing curricula and when developing standards. Secondly, to promote work-based learning. And thirdly, to bring all the stakeholders together to jointly shape a TVET system that is demand-driven and which corresponds to market trends and market dynamics. Only if these conditions are met, we believe, TVET can unlock its full potential. Well, as you might know, Germany has a certain history with um, TVET in our own country, not only in uh, developing development cooperation. The German TVET model is, we think, a very promising model to demonstrate a, how the government and the private sector share responsibilities in governing a TVET system. And secondly, how adequate work-based learning helps acquire the knowledge and skills needed to perform work well. What we do not promote is to transfer the German TVET system one-to-one -to, -one to our partner countries, as, surprisingly, it is often demanded when we talk to our partners. We do not do that because the system must be emb embedded, the TVET system must be embedded in the country-specific socioeconomic and also historic context. But what we encourage, on the other hand, is to adapt key elements of our system. Not the whole system to be transferred, but to just consider key elements. For example, the consultation with the private sector that I was mentioning before. Or secondly, to invest in research, for example, to generate labor market data. Or the relevance of work-based learning or the training of teachers and instructors, to mention just a few. The Sustainable Development Goals that, as you all know, were adopted by the UN last year, have set a new challenging agenda. You were talking about all or the relevance of all SDGs, which is totally correct. Um, and I'll return, um, refer specifically to SDG 4, which is on education. And this goal number 4 demands inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong learning opportunities for all. BMZ is very committed towards this goal and considers the investment in TVET of very high relevance for achieving this objective. With a budget, or with disbursements basically, of close to 120 million euros last year, which was the last year of statistical recording, Germany is by far 
the largest bilateral donor in Tibet. Well, 2015 was not only characterized by the adoption of the SDGs, but also by worldwide displacement. In fact, the highest level ever recorded. The UNHCR estimates that globally about 60 million people are in forced displacement currently. And more than 50% of them are coming from Syria, Afghanistan, and Somalia. On the other hand, Pakistan, Turkey, Jordan, Lebanon, and Ethiopia are among the top hosting countries for refugees. Countries that are developing countries themselves, countries that are struggling to provide infrastructure and the required capacities to cope with the large influx of refugees. Only very little data exists on the global displaced population aged 15 to 24 years. Yet estimates suggest that young people represent a re remarkable share of the refugee population. They usually have limited access to education post-primary. They usually have no right to work where they landed. And they have, in, ver in many cases, a not very clear legal status. Young people are restricted from pursuing their desired career path. Displacements often force young people to drop out of their education. And what they do in many cases is they work to meet their and their families', families basic needs. The price they pay is to drop out of education. Without a work permit, they're particularly vulnerable to informal employment and potentially to exploitation. Yet young people often show remarkable ability to adapt to such challenging living conditions. Beyond meeting these basic needs, displaced young people have the very le legitimate desire to continue their education, we believe. In response to the refugee crisis, we've scaled up many of our programs in the Middle East, in Northern and in Sub-Saharan Africa. And besides basic humanitarian assistance, TVET and ultimately decent employment are of very high relevance for people in forced displacements. TVET as a means to employment promotion empowers to make a living, as was mentioned before, and it gives confidence in not just being the recipients of external aid. Let me give you a brief example. In, in Jordan, we're training Syrian refugees along with Jordanians as plumbers, which is a job profile highly relevant in that region because water is very scarce. By considering both refugees and local communities, our intention is to contribute also to social cohesion and to peaceful coexistence. Forced displacement will remain of high relevance on the international political agenda in the coming years. And when everything is taken from you, education and skills become the most valuable good that you can carry along. Ladies and gentlemen, BMZ and Univoc are affiliated in a strong, committed, and already long-lasting partnership. We both share the view that TVET is much more than just the mere acquisition of employable skills. It is a tool to empowerment. And this mutual understanding has been the basis of our cooperation and unites us in what we do. 
Skills give young people faith and confidence in what they are capable of achieving. Skills are a good that is not bound to a place. Skills are an opportunity to find decent employment. We recognize the potential that TVET has in responding to youth unemployment and will continue to promote its image. The SDG 4 remains our common frame of reference, and BMZ and Univoc will, I'm sure, remain committed to ensure inclusive and quality education for all and promote lifelong learning. The UNESCO TVET strategy sets the path to do so, and my sincere congratulations on this achievement. I'm looking forward to the program today, to your contributions. In the spirit of today's very important theme, technical and vocational education and training inspires and it empowers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Lindenthal, for inaugurating. Uh, merci beaucoup, Mr. Lindenthal, d'avoir organisé notre session. Uh, alors, uh, maintenant que nous avions, uh, que nous avons uh, uh, tous entendu uh, les uh, exposés, les mots de bienvenue, uh, on va maintenant passer au point suivant uh, du uh, programme. Merci encore. Et uh, on va tous les applaudir.